Hey guys, if you like my videos, click on subscribe and give me a like. And don't forget the bell so you can get notified of new ones. Hey everybody, how's it going? Dale here. In my video today, I have a brand new Dell Inspiron 5000 series laptop. The model is 5575. It's brand new. I just took it out of the box. It's got the AMD Ryzen 5 2500U CPU. Uh, it comes from the out of the box from the factory with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory and a 1 terabyte mechanical hard drive. It's got a backlit keyboard. It is touch screen. Um, I'm going to do a little upgrading on it for the customer. Nothing too big, but what I'm going to do is there is an M2 slot in here for an NVMe drive. I'm going to put a brand new Western Digital Gen 3 250 gigabyte NVMe drive inside. Install Windows on that, then I'm going to clean up the old mechanical hard drive. We're going to leave that in here and just use that for an additional storage drive for whatever. So you'll have the 250 gigs SATA drive, or SSD drive and the one terabyte hard drive. I'm going to walk you through opening it up, getting Windows installed. Um, what I'm going to do is a clean install when I'm all done on the new SSD. Some people say, well, you should just make a restore or recovery drive, and then you'll get all the drivers from the factory. But, you know, again, this is brand new out of the box, so there's no customer data on it that's, you know, that nobody cares about. I just prefer the clean install. Number one, it's really quick. It takes about 10, 12 minutes. Then you just simply go to Dell's website, punch in your service tag at their support page, and you can download all the important drivers like the Intel management system, maybe chipset drivers, basically any important critical drivers that Microsoft through Windows you know, update isn't going to install. Um, video drivers, chipset drivers, maybe a touchpad driver if they have one. Uh, but if they don't have it, that means it's already taken care of. So this does have a lighted keyboard as well. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh, and I'm going to add uh, more RAM. It's got it's got eight gigabytes. I'm pretty sure there's two four gig sticks in here, but the customer wants to add a, take out one of the four gig sticks and put a, a 16 gig DDR4, giving it a total of 20 gigabytes of memory with the 250 gig SSD and the one terabyte mechanical hard drive. So, having said that, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. I'm going to open it up. First thing I'll do when I open it up is disconnect the battery. You should do that when you're poking around inside these in case you drop something. So we're going to go ahead and shut that down and I'm going to show you how to open it up. All right guys, so I shut it down. Um, the only tools you're going to really need, number one, the most important one is a good little spudger tool. There's a lot of different types of little spudger tools you can get. Uh, sometimes a stiff credit card will work to open these up, but on some of these like this one, it's just it's you, you're going to need something a little more thickness to it. So I use these kind of tools all the time. It works pretty good. Don't want to use any steel or metal tools. You'll leave you know tool marks. Uh, here's my NVMe drive from Western Digital. Here's my Corsair 16 gig DDR4. Stick them memory that we're going to do inside. So. I've already taken out all the screws. I don't want to bore you with all that, but there's 10 screws. There's three different types of screws in this model. These three along the back here are quite a bit different. They, the, the thread is deeper. Let me see if you can get a close up on this. I don't know if you can see that or not. But the, the, there's like a shaft and then there's thread, so the thread doesn't bite until it gets down in there. These are a little tricky to get out. Just be patient. Got to put some upward pulling force on it with something while you're unscrewing it. Just kind of be careful, but they will come out without damaging anything. Then you got this little screw right here, which is a different length. Then the rest of these screws are all the same length. So you got one size here, one size with these, and one size with these. So just remember what screw goes on what hole. So having said that, I'm going to flip it back over and we're going to um, these are a little tricky to get out. There's a little seam along the edge here. You can see where the palm rest meets the bottom pan. There's a seam all around here. I'm going to start it from, you know, with a laptop turned up this way that I'm going to flip it over to remove the bottom pan. But I'm going to get my little spudger tool. Usually if you start along the front here, again, don't want to scratch it. So I'm going to get in there and just kind of gently go across the front. You hear a couple clicks and pops, which is good. 
Just don't force it. So you can see that I got it kind of started along the side in the front. Try to get a little bit over here. Usually these corners are a little tricky. I'm not going to worry about that. I don't want to force it because you don't want to break it. These can be a little difficult along this back edge here, so be patient. You know, I use, sometimes I use a little tool like this to get in the back to kind of work it from one end to the other. Again, just got to be patient and go slow, but it will it will come free. So, oop, let's flip it back over, sorry. But now that I've got it started here, you can see how it's opened up. Usually if I grab the corner and put a little, little upward pressure on it, not too much, and I kind of hold it up, I'm gonna get my tool back in here. And it, well, this one, usually they're pretty stiff back here, but this one came right up with no problem, okay? <clears throat> so now, here's our battery, and here's where it's connected to the motherboard. Just don't touch anything in here if you don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and unplug the battery. It comes out pretty easy. Just pull it out gently like that, and there, we've just connected the battery. As an added safety measure, you can open this up. Just kind of hold the power button in for three or four seconds, do it a couple of times, discharge it, all the capacitors and whatnot. So there, I feel good about that. So over here are two RAM modules. They're four gig DDR4, 2400. Uh, I'm gonna take this one out. It's probably slot A, dim A, yep. So I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna put in our 16 gig Corsair DDR4 module. There, so we got 16 plus 4 is 20 gigabytes. And here's our mechanical hard drive. We're going to leave that in there when I do the Windows installation from this uh, USB Windows install flash drive. I have a video to show you how to make one of these. It's pretty simple. It's Windows 10. It's free to download, free to install. It'll automatically activate. You don't have to worry about that. But when you're all done and you get back into Windows, Get all the Windows updates, then it's not a bad idea to go to Dell's website and get a handful of those important drivers like the Intel management software, maybe the chipset, the video. Um, basically, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But it's not a bad idea to get some of those important updates right from Dell. All you need is your service tag or the model number, in this case, 5575. So, <clears throat> And over here is our SSD slot. You can see it right here. We can put an NVMe drive in here. And here's the mounting screw. That's where I'm going to put this. So I'm going to remove this little mounting screw right here. Careful when you handle these. Not a good idea to touch the little prongs, the pins at the end here if you can help it. Same with the RAM, just be careful. So I'm going to put this in here guys, I'm going to put the mounting screw in, again just be careful. I'm using a good quality Phillips screwdriver magnetic tip, it's a number zero Phillips bit for most of these all laptops, the zero number zero works just fine. So we got the new NVMe drive in there. We're going to leave the mechanical hard drive in or the one terabyte. I'm going to clean that all up before I start installing the windows on the new solid state drive because uh, we're going to do a, a clean install with our flash drive. So we got the extra RAM in there. I got that installed. We're going to hook the battery back up. <clears throat> they don't have a spot in here for you know anything else other than what you got here, the, the mechanical drive, the SSD, you know, you could put another 16 gig stick of RAM in there, but the customer just wanted to go up to 20, so that's what I'm going to do. Open the battery back up. All right, so we got the battery connected. Everything looks good. 
I, I always put the screws back in when I'm all done, just in case. But I will put the screws back in, not to worry. Just gently snap it back in. Don't squeeze too hard on the lid area, because remember, you got a screen back there. So there, we got all of our good clicks back together. I'm going to hook up the power cord for this install. Now remember, we have, if I boot this up right now, I'll boot right up off the mechanical hard drive because that SSD, nothing's been done to it yet. But we're going to take care of all that when I boot up the flash drive. Um, again, I just prefer clean installs. I get necessary drivers. Um, that's just the way I like to do it, and it works great. Then you can install your apps and programs, and you're, you're all set to go. So I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to be getting the Windows install. All right, guys. So I'm going to put in my Windows 10 installation installation media here into my USB port. Don't matter which one. And turn it on. Immediately, I'm going to start tapping the F12 key on this Dell to get to the boot menu because we don't want to boot into Windows. Just keep tapping it. I got the boot menu here. We can use our arrow keys. You can see the first choice is the USB Kingston flash drive, so we don't need to do anything. It's the UFI boot, which is what we want. Just hit enter. And then we're going to choose Windows 10 64-bit setup. Just hit enter. It's going to load the necessary files. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it. All right, don't need to change anything here, US English for me. Quick install now. We gotta accept the license terms here. Click next. Now we're gonna go, you got upgrade? No, we're gonna go to custom. Now here's all of our different partitions on our existing factory drive. So basically we're just, the last one down here where it says 232.8 primary, that's our new SSD. So we're just, I'm just gonna go down through and delete all these partitions off that hard drive. Again, this is a brand new laptop. There's no important date on it. If you were doing this, a uh, computer you've used for a while, make sure you back up all your data in your user account before you do any of this. But again, if, when you're all done, you can go to Dell's website. If you want to install their Dell support assist and all that Dell proprietary junkware, in my opinion, go for it. It's not going to hurt a thing. It's going to clean up all these partitions. We're going to end up with two drives. <clears throat> okay, that's good. Hit delete. So now we got two drives. The first one is the one terabyte mechanical drive. Then this one here is our SSD. That's where we're going to install one. Is just choose it and hit next. And we're going to let it go through this, and I'll be back in just a minute. All right, guys, we've installed Windows okay. up, up. up our flash drive. You don't need this in the USB port anymore. So on this screen, of course, you're going to choose your region, United States for us. Just click yes. Your keyboard is set to U US. US keyboard. You also type with another we'll skip the layout. And you can change all this stuff later now in the settings. Now let's get you connected to a network. 
Um, that way you can get updates, apps, and cat videos as soon as possible. How about the first one on the list? Want actually, to I'm going to choose I don't have internet. That way you Just don't have so to worry you know, about... Connecting to a network now could save you... Continue with limited setup. Type what you want to name your account. User. Okay, now type a password. You want a password, set up a Microsoft account instead of the standard local account. You can do the password, but I don't need that, so I'm going to hit next. Windows can save your spot. No. Hey, look. Decline. Again, this is all stuff These you can settings, turn back Microsoft on. Recommends. Just make Go sure you solve a little quicker. And select accept when you're ready. I turn all this off. Privacy. Leave location on if you want. Hit accept and it'll finish up. Almost done now. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you. And Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. Once it's into Windows 10, this is a 1909 edition, I'm installing the, the newest one right now. Uh, just go into Windows Update, run your Windows Update, get all the cumulative updates and all the important stuff through Microsoft, reboot two or three times. You can update all your store apps as well, open up the Microsoft Store. Uh, you don't need a Microsoft account to do any of that. And then you can go to Dell's website, click on Support, put in your service tag number or just the model. And you can download any necessary drivers or any drivers, additional drivers you want to install that Microsoft didn't install. Um, and then after that, you should be good to go. But I'm just going to let this finish up. All right, guys. So we got Windows 10 installed, a nice clean install. I'm not connected to any, any, any internet. I'm going to go ahead and just plug in my Ethernet cable. You can connect to your Wi Fi, of course, but this model has an Ethernet port. So when, it, when you do that, it says, let's finish setting up. Just help, hit OK, and they want Microsoft trying to get you to set up a Microsoft account, which you don't need. I'm just going to click on Skip for now right here, or touch it. It's a touch screen. Um, so let's real quick, before I do any Windows updates, I'm just going to right click on my Windows Start button. I'm going to go to System. And you can see right here, if you can get in there and show them that, that's 20 gigabytes of memory. There's our Ryzen CPU. So, everything went good. Now, one last thing I want to do. I'm going to go back to the Start button. I'm going to right click. Go to Disk Management. Make it big. Here's our, here's our unallocated one terabyte drive that came in it that we deleted everything off of. Here's our new Windows, our system drive here. So we're just going to right click on, on this. New Simple Volume. Just click next. That's the, the simple volume in megabytes. Just use the default. Unless you want to make, make partitions on it, you can. Hit next. Drive letter, yes. NTFS, yes. And finish. You do a quick boom. You got a new volume. You want to just go over here and right click and go to your file explorer. This PC. So here's our new SSD with our Windows. Still got over 200 gigabytes of free space. Here's our one terabyte empty hard drive. So plenty of extra storage now, guys. Um, don't forget to check out some of my other videos. Leave comments if you want. But don't forget to get all your Windows updates. Let's go check real quick just to make sure because I didn't have the Ethernet hooked up. Oops. Okay, so we can see Windows activated, which it always will. Windows 10 is free now. Um, so, it's pretty much the last step, guys. So get all your Windows updates, several rounds of those, and go to Dell.com, go to Support, go to View All Support. Just type in the Inspiron model number, and boom, you can get any extra uh, additional drivers that you want to get, and you should be, should be good to go. I appreciate you all watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe, and have a great day.